Welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking about epistasis. This is a form of interaction between different genes. Let's say we have two genes. One gene is going to cover or mask the effect of another. Now, before we look at that, let's have a quick reminder of what a dihybrid cross was. So here we have two genes. Gene one codes for hair color and gene two codes for hairstyle. We can see that each gene is responsible for a different characteristic. And we know that we get a ratio of nine to three to three to one. And this ratio happens when you have a dihybrid cross between two heterozygous parents. We can refer to this as a normal dihybrid cross because what we're about to look at does not follow this normal pattern. Okay, so in epistasis, again, we're going to have two genes, we'll say gene A and gene B. Now we can see that gene B codes for a characteristic, in this case, hairstyle. However, gene A does not code for a characteristic. Instead, gene A is responsible for controlling the expression of gene B. So gene A, or the controlling gene, is also known as the epistatic gene. And gene B, the one that is being controlled, is known as the hypostatic gene. Let's say in this case, the dominant version of gene A, so either having two big A's or a big A and small A, means that gene B can be expressed. However, the recessive version, meaning having two small A's, will prevent the expression of gene B. And this is how gene B gets controlled. Now, in this case, we have an example of recessive epistasis because we said that the recessive version of gene A, small a in this case, will prevent or cover or mask gene B. So we can say that capital A is saying go to gene B, go and be expressed, while small a says no, you can't be expressed. Let's say we have a individual with the following genotype, two big A's, big B, small b. What would their phenotype be? To answer this, the first thing we'll do is look at the epistatic gene. In this case, we have two big A's. That means it's a go ahead from the epistatic gene. Now we can look at the hypostatic gene. And overall, it's dominant. That means the person will have straight hair. Let's do another example. So again, we're going to look at the epistatic gene first. Again, that's dominant, so it's a go ahead. Look at the next gene, which is also dominant overall. That means they will also have straight hair. How about this individual? The epistatic gene is dominant. So go to the next gene and that is overall recessive. So this individual will have a wavy hair. And a final example, two small A's and two big B's. Looking at the epistatic gene, we see that overall it's a no. That means we don't look at the next gene at all. So it doesn't matter if you have two big B's here or two small B's, nothing will be expressed. So it will be neither straight nor wavy. So what will the phenotype be in this case? Well, for that one, it will be specified in the question. So let's do an example question and put this into practice. Okay, so here's an example question. If you want, you can pause the video to read it. Once you're ready, press play so we can go through the answer. So in this question, we have two genes, gene R, which has capital R and lowercase r, and gene Q, which has capital Q and lowercase q. Capital R codes for a red pigment, and small r codes for a pink pigment, and these pigments will be visible in the color of the flower. Gene Q, capital Q, allows the expression of gene R, and small q inhibits the expression of gene R. So again, here we have an example of recessive epistasis because it is the recessive version of gene Q that says no. Finally, if neither pigment is expressed, then the flower will appear white. So it won't be red or pink, it will just be white. Okay, so we're going to write the two genes like this. Big R means red and small r is pink. Big Q is the go ahead and small Q and small Q is being epistatic, so it says no. And just as a reminder, the top gene is the epistatic gene and the bottom one is the hypostatic gene. So let's look at the question then. What are the phenotypes of roses with the following genotypes? Starting with this one, we'll look at the epistatic gene first and that overall is dominant, so that means go ahead and look at the next one. 
So here we can see that overall it's dominant, meaning that the rose will have red flowers. Now let's look at the next one. Again, we start with the epistatic gene, which is dominant. So we look at the next one and it's red. In the third example, the epistatic gene has two small cues, which means it's recessive. And that means you can't go to the next gene. The next gene will not be expressed. So it doesn't matter if it's big R or small R or any R. Now in this case, it's going to be white. We get neither red nor pink, nothing's expressed, and therefore we get white. In the next example, again, two small cues, so we don't care what's next because it's going to be white. And in the last example, big Q and small Q. So overall that's dominant, meaning go, we go to the next gene, two small R's means recessive, so it's going to have a pink flower. So in this video, we started on epistasis and spoke about what happens during recessive epistasis. In the next video, we're going to look at ratios in recessive epistasis. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.